got a message from Vivek who wrote, I absolutely love your videos, learning a lot from them. I wanted to understand about the expand feature. Uh, it doesn't come up on my Captivate 2017 when I do a preview. Also, my responsive project doesn't adjust itself as per the device. So a couple of things that jump out at what Vivek is asking about here. Uh, the first thing, of course, uh, is that Vivek is saying that um, they're not seeing the text expand feature and they're not seeing their responsive project adjust uh, as per the device, the text. Uh, so there's a couple of possibilities. Uh, number one, um, here I've created some, some sample elements here. This is a text caption and I've put in a ridiculous amount of text. Uh, this is going to force it to create the, uh, the text pop out or text expand icon. Uh, I've also created a fictitious but uh, still demonstrable previous and next button. And of course, when I just click in the, uh, the scrap area here, I'm seeing in my properties panel a couple of things that you need to be aware of when looking at your, your projects. First of all, of course, make sure you have this preview control bar up here or preview uh, bar up here. Uh, if you don't, you may not actually have a responsive project. So grab this slider here and test it out and see whether it will adjust its size. The first thing to note, of course, on your stage here, you're not going to see um, adjustable or uh, font scaling at all. It's only going to happen when you publish out your project or you preview your project. So that's the, the first thing to check out. Um, but if you truly have a whole bunch of text, more than what appears on the screen perhaps, and uh, uh, more than would, would be accommodated by smaller device sizes, uh, then you'll probably see the text expand icon at some point. The other thing too, make sure your minimum font size is set appropriately. Uh, in this case here, I'm saying I don't want any font smaller than 16 points. Uh, reason for that, of course, is I want users to be able to still read what's on the screen. Uh, and that includes my navigation controls as well. Uh, this item here, this enable uniform text scaling, if that's not checked off and you have two like items like navigation controls or uh, other elements that you want to maintain the same font size for, uh, what's going to happen is the word previous is obviously a larger word than the word next. And the word previous is going to start shrinking down on smaller screen sizes before the word next does. Well, you can avoid that by simply making sure that enable uniform text scaling is checked off. This is going to make sense. What it basically does is it looks at all the objects on the slide and any object that is currently set for the same font and font size and formatting and so on, uh, it will scale those at the same rate as one another. So a previous and next button uh, will shrink or grow depending on uh, you know the size of the device in a uniform fashion. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. Let's do a little preview of this and see what this is like here. We'll just preview this project. And once this opens up on your device, you'll be, of course, uh, instantly, you'll, you'll see that text expand icon up here. I put, like I said, a ridiculous amount of text here. And uh, obviously what's going to happen is that's going to uh, create more uh, text than necessary. You can see that the uh, the uniform font scaling for the previous and next is working well. Uh, obviously, there's a point where that previous button is just too, or the text is too large for that particular button, and I end up with a text expand icon for that as well. Uh, and of course, you could play around with your object settings to possibly avoid that. Let's click this uh, text expand icon. And just see what that looks like. So here on a mobile phone, uh, again, it's a ridiculous amount of text. <laughs> I wouldn't want to put this much text in e-learning. But on a mobile phone, a user could read this and, of course, be able to, uh, you know, scroll through this, tap anywhere on their screen to return to the e-learning project and continue with the, the rest of their e-learning course.
If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.